Greetings, YouTube. Chris from Computer Stuff. New year, new computer, new camera. You might be able to tell. Is the quality any better? We'll find out in post. This is the first time I'm using it. Anyway, here we have the Lenovo IdeaPad 3, 17 inch. The 17 ISO 5 to be precise. It's hard to find 17 inch laptops these days, let alone good ones. But today we're going to dive into Lenovo's what is supposed to be their entry level 17 inch laptop, but isn't priced as one. What we're gonna find out is if it's any good and if you should buy one yourself with all that money that grandma gave you over Christmas. This particular unit is equipped with 20 gigabytes of RAM, a 512 gigabyte solid state drive, the seventh, I'm sorry, the 10th generation i7 processor, and Intel Iris Plus graphics. Now, all of that combined seems like a lot of horsepower on paper, and the cost is reflective as such. This computer starts at $999. I think you can get them on like Amazon, Best Buy, these kinds of places. And I do not necessarily think that it's good value. I'm gonna go ahead and blast down a couple of specs, the, the typical stuff that we do on this channel, and you'll find out maybe why I don't particularly love this machine. And you can then comment in the comment section whether you think it's any good yourself. So it starts, let, you know what, let's go ahead and get the good stuff out of the way here first off. Uh, the screen on it is pretty decent. It gets fairly bright, it's matte, it's crisp, and it's got pretty decent viewing angles. It's a good IPS display. Uh, it is a full high definition non-touch screen. So there is gonna be a shortcoming for a lot of people with a 17 inch machine. A lot of people for whatever reason want the touch screen in a 17 inch platform. Not trying to yuck anybody's yum, but you should know that this one doesn't have it. For that matter too, FHD on a 17 inch screen is just beginning to look a little bit dated. You know, it was one thing when it was, you know, a few years ago and FHD was unfortunately not the default, but it is now. And 17, it just could do for maybe like a 2K display, something like that. After all, this machine is about a thousand bucks, but nevertheless, the display in it is good quality. And if you're gonna be staring at the thing all day, I think you'll be fine. Not a whole lot of eye fatigue, bright enough. Good in a college environment, bright rooms, this kind of thing. You get the idea. Some other stuff about this computer that is good is the keyboard. It is a full size, so if you are an accountant and you're constantly inputting numbers there on the side, you're gonna have a good experience with data entry on this. We found that the keyboard itself is very tactile, very, it just feels good to tap on. The clicks just feel good, it's responsive, it's accurate. It's a nice, nice keyboard. However, it does not have a backlight. Now that may not be a deal breaker for anybody, but nevertheless, it doesn't have a backlight. And again, worth mentioning. Trackpad on it. It, for a 17 inch computer, is a little bit on the small side. We kind of wish that they made it a little bit bigger, but nevertheless, it does do multi-touch pretty well. It distinguishes the left and right click pretty well. And for that matter, like ghosting on it isn't like too terrible. Like when you push the mouse somewhere, it more or less goes where you want it to. It's like this trackpad is sort of like, its biggest penalty is the size, but out of like a 10, it's like maybe a seven out of 10, something like that. So it's above, it's above average, but just make, you know, maybe they could have just made it a little bit bigger. Uh, it has a fingerprint scanner. Uh, is, but it does not have a Windows Hello compatible camera. In fact, features in this thing are a little bit lackluster in general. It does have Wi-Fi 6 built in, and it does have Bluetooth and all that. So as far as wireless technologies, this thing is definitely up to date. Has a webcam built in at the top with two little little microphone, dual little microphone array there too. It's got a little privacy shutter for all of those for all those people that like dancing naked in front of their camera. Or maybe you have an OnlyFans page and you don't mind having the, find the camera open. But nevertheless, the camera quality, what does it look like? Am I gonna be able to become an OnlyFans star with this camera? Well, why don't you find out now? This is the quality you can expect from the camera on the Lenovo IdeaPad 3 17 inch. As you can see, it is, eh, it's okay. It'll get Zoom, Skype, and all the other office stuff done well. And it's got two little microphones sitting at the top. Would you pay $10 a month to see that kind of footage? So again, no Windows Hello compatible camera, but it does have a fingerprint scanner. It's a nice little biometric way to kind of quick access into your machine. As far as aesthetics are concerned, it's just a nice sort of elegant, simple laptop. It's built pretty well. It's The plastics on it are fairly decent. We do wish that they did something a little bit different with the hinges. It's a very heavy laptop, and I don't know if this will really translate on camera, but it's a very heavy laptop, and you can see the screen kind of kind of wobbling a little bit. 
Um, a lot of lower end, look at this, it's kind of back the way it was, a lot of lower end Lenovo's back in the day of yore had a tendency to snap the hinges off of the plastics and thus rendering you with a paperweight of a laptop uh, or you had to kind of fancily duct tape the hinges back together. But nevertheless, the hinge quality on this is kind of representative of what it was in some of those older laptops. And given the fact that you've got a big 17 heavy inch behemoth of a laptop, we're not really sure this thing is going to be all that reliable longevity wise. We're, we're, a, little, we're a little fearful that this thing will kind of not hold up too well, especially under abuse if you're like a college student or somebody taking this through an airport and you know, off of their office desk. You get the idea. It's, it's built okay. It's not built great, but it does look, does look decent enough. Let's go ahead and shoot into the cons now because largely that's what I've got about this thing. I don't, I'm not a big fan of this computer if that was, if that was, if that was, if that, if I wasn't conveying that. Anyway, uh, where do I even begin? Um, let's go ahead and begin with the speakers. Speakers on this advertise that they are Dolby audio. So automatically out the gate, you know they're <laughs> they have They have good highs, they have almost no mids, they have almost no lows. They get loud enough for like a podcast or something like that, but there's no character, there's no definition, and there is a little bit of distortion. It does have a headphone jack on there, so you will definitely need to use headphones if you want a nice audiophile experience, but nevertheless, these speakers on this are as disappointing as they are on pretty much most Lenovo most Lenovo computers. As far as input and output is concerned, while we're on the subject of headphone jacks, on this side you have your headphone jack. I just said it. Were you not listening? I said it had one. On this side you got a full-size SD card reader. I think a lot of people will like the fact that there is a full-size SD card reader. Uh, on this side, you've got two USB super speed ports. Thank God they put that in because it doesn't have USB-C in it, which I'm really, that is, I'll get into the, I'll get into that in a moment. You have a regular USB port here, full-size HDMI, and then of course, where you plug it in because it doesn't run on solar energy. It's only 2022, people. Just, it's never gonna run on solar energy. USB-C, there's no excuse for this computer at this price range not to have USB-C, let alone most computers. I think a 17 inch machine is kind of designed to be somewhat of a work, like a workstation, right? It's supposed to like sit on your desk and do computer stuff. Ask the name of the channel. But nevertheless, it doesn't have USB-C in it. So if you wanted to use this thing as like an audio processor or even like a video editor, you're kind of SOL in this in that in that department, which is a shame because all in all, this computer is pretty fast. It does have really good specs. I'll gonna I'll go ahead and throw a benchmark on the screen here of what this thing is capable of. But needless to say, this thing will absolutely outperform almost anything in terms of day-to-day -day tasks. It'll multitask with the best of them. It'll be capable of light gaming such as Fortnite, Roblox, any of these other sort of not terribly graphical intensive games, Minecraft, that sort of thing. Uh, but nevertheless, the computer, again, with all that power and oomph and stuff like that, they just, they're, they're, they crippled it by not having USB-C on there. And I, and I just, I just really don't understand why Lenovo, why you wouldn't, why you wouldn't just put that damn port on there, but they didn't. Battery life is another thing on this laptop that is kind of disappointing. You can really only practically get about four to six hours on this machine. If you're doing any kind of like heavy internet browsing or video watching, stuff like that, for example, watching your favorite computer stuff YouTube channel, you can really expect to even air closer to the four hour side as far as battery life is concerned. This thing just doesn't, it just does not have a big good battery in it. It does charge pretty quick, but it's not a fast charging compatible laptop. They just gave you a, give you a basic little 65 watt charging adapter. Uh, so that is something for people that are going to be using this for like traveling or if they needed this for like client presentations, stuff like that, you will need to know that the battery life isn't particularly good. But there is one kind of neat feature with this laptop and that is that it goes all the way flat. Don't really know what you would need that for, especially considering it doesn't have a touch screen and it'll die before you get to your client's office to where you could like show them something like this. But nevertheless, it does go completely flat and I like that for some reason. As far as user serviceability is concerned, that is kind of a nice touch that this thing does offer. This little bezel can pop off and you can replace the screen if you ever, if you ever break your screen. You can pop the bottom cover off and you can replace most of the components in there, including motherboard, wireless card, 
RAM, NVMe, you get the idea. The NVMe drive in it is user upgradable or computer shop upgradable. Uh, it, does, it has 20 gigs of RAM. It's a four plus 16 configuration, meaning it only has one RAM slot on it and, uh, and then four gigabytes soldered onto the motherboard. So it is maxed out at 20 gigs, which might be a deal breaker for some people using this thing for like virtual machines or server sort of usage, whatever. And then there is an extra slot inside of there uh, where you can put in an additional hard drive if you want to, but the thing you need to be cognizant of is that you have to have the Lenovo proprietary ribbon cable, which of course the computer doesn't come with. Even Acer provides the ribbon cable for an extra hard drive, but no, Lenovo decided not to give you that for your thousand dollars. So there you have it. Do I recommend the Lenovo IdeaPad 3 17 inch machine? I don't think that I do. If you buy one, I mean, I don't think you're gonna be disappointed with it necessarily, but you really need to know its drawbacks before purchasing this thing. And there are just quite a few of them. Again, to recap, there's no USB-C in there, and I don't think that there's any excuse for that. The battery life on it isn't particularly good. As far as features are concerned, it doesn't really have anything too great. It doesn't have a Windows Hello compatible camera. It doesn't have a backlight on the keyboard. It has bad speakers and it has an FHD screen on it, which, you know, even though is okay, it's just sort of a little bit outdated and there's no touch compatibility. There's a lot of sacrifices on this laptop. You're basically paying for the 512 20 gig RAM setup spec on here, but I just don't think that's worth it. You can probably get like gaming machines, or for that matter, you could get a 15 inch machine equipped with the same thing plus more for much, much less than a thousand bucks. I guess the bottom line is, is that I don't think that this computer is good value. Who is this computer for? Well, I think that it's probably for somebody that just needs something that's gonna sit on their desk, not go anywhere, and they just need it for sort of daily productivity use, but um, you know they don't need anything too crazy. They're not gonna be doing any video or audio editing. Um, it's just like kind of maybe like a grandmother that needs a supercomputer for some reason and likes the big screen because it's easier to see. Uh, who is it not for? It's not for gamers, not for audio editors, not for video editors, not for, I think most people beyond that, accountants would probably do okay with this computer as well, but I think you're kind of overpaying for, uh, I just think you're overpaying even, even for, for what you're getting. So that is the Lenovo IdeaPad 3. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to us in the comment section. Please like and subscribe, and we will be back with another video here in 2022 real soon.